So if you've got your Bibles, turn with me today to the book of James, chapter 1. That's in the New Testament for you people that don't read the Bible. <laughs> you'd be surprised how many people don't read the Bible that go to church. They say they can't understand it. Let somebody else tell them about it. And that's why they get messed up all the time. And the Bible says, study the show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So if you don't study, is it possible you can wrongly divide the word of truth? Yes, you can. And I mean that sincerely. So God's going to do some great and marvelous things today. I want to read the book of James chapter one. I want to start reading with verse 22, very familiar scripture. But before I do that, how many of you, when you were children, you love fairy tales? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know how almost kids love this. I want you to finish this statement. Mirror, mirror on the wall. You can tell y'all been watching television. Glory to God. <laughs> I want to deal with mirror, mirror on the wall. I want to deal with that this morning or this afternoon and God's going to bless us. Let's see where we go on this. James chapter one, verse 22. But be you doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. You know, you got to be pretty ignorant to deceive yourself. I mean, you know, I can understand somebody might deceive you, but to deceive yourself, you got to be a living fool. It's kind of like eating ice cream and say, that's not going to make me fat. <laughs> your mama, that's deceiving yourself. But you'd be surprised how many people, when they're deceived, most of the time they're deceived by themselves than they are by others. And really, it's a shame that you can deceive yourself when the word of God is so true and so plain. Need a good theologian to help you misunderstand the word of God. <laughs> He'll give it to you in Greek. All you want is English. Nothing wrong with Greek. He said, for deceiving yourselves, verse 23, for any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass, mirror, mirror on the wall. Now, see, who thought, how could he get that out of the Bible? <laughs> for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be empowered to prosper in his deed. The word blessed means empowered to prosper. I want to go back to verse 24. For he beholdeth himself, goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. So it's very possible to forget what manner of man you were. I, you know, when I first started coming here preaching these believers conventions, I think this is my 22nd year doing these things. There are a lot of people that, that used to be here are not here anymore. Why? What happened? Because we didn't change. And neither did God. So is it possible, and I'm not being critical, just being truthful, that said that faith stuff didn't work. Maybe you didn't work it. You see what I'm saying? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Really, when you understand why I want to go here in this service today, you got, it's amazing to me, why would anybody get away from faith? What else is there? Because you can't prove anything you do by God unless you use faith. How many of you are saved? Hold your hand. Prove it. <laughs> you cannot. You have no contract signed by God. When you die, you go to heaven. But you know it so much. That when somebody walks up to you and says, oh, you're not saved. Get out of my face, man. I am saved. Well, since you developed yourself so strong on salvation like that, that people can't talk you out of it. Why don't you do that on the healing side? Amen. You can do it if you develop it on the salvation side without any evidence. Why can't you do it on the healing side? Why can't you do it on the financial side? Why don't you just do it on one side? Because uh, I believe God made us all multifaceted. Why? So light could flow through us and light could come out of us. Why did they cut a diamond? You used, to, you used to cut a diamond with 17 facets. Then they came up with something called 58 facets. So they would take light and make it go in and out of it so many different ways so you could see the brilliance of what it really was. And if you really want to understand a real diamond, a perfect diamond has no color in it. And there should not be no color in Christianity neither. Amen. Thank you for that, Holy Ghost grunt. You see what I'm saying? Because color doesn't exist in a real perfect stone. And you should be flawless. Now, how do I know about that? Because I bought Kathy a bunch of them things. 
and I had to learn, <laughs> praise God, what I was getting. So I want to deal with this mirror, mirror on the wall. And I want to deal also with verse 25, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. Now write this down if you're taking notes. The Mosaic law told people what to do, but did not assist them in the performing of it. We got a lot of things going on today because there's always somebody think they're coming up with a new revelation about something when they're actually getting away a lot from the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. If anybody believes in grace, I believe in grace. By grace are you saved. And people said, I'm not under the law. Neither am I. Jesus fulfilled the law, but he didn't throw it away. You see, because if you throw it away, then you got to take 2 Timothy 3, 17 completely out because the law is in the book of Deuteronomy. And Jesus quoted more from the book of Deuteronomy than he did any other book of the Bible. If you do any kind of study on Jesus' quotes concerning the Old Testament, almost all of them coming out of Deuteronomy. Yet 2 Timothy 3.17 says all scripture is Deuteronomy scripture. So you can't take it away. He, yes, he fulfilled it. See, I fulfill this, this the, uh, John 3.16 for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I fulfilled that scripture by getting born again, but I didn't throw it away. Because you see, everyone in this building, including Jesse Duplantis, needs the thou shalt nots. Why? It keeps you in the game. When you get away from the thou shalt nots, you go out of boundary. You're out of bounds. You see what I'm saying? But no, you don't live under the law by no means because Jesus fulfilled it, but you don't throw it away because it's scripture. And it can be profitable for you today. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable doctrine, reproof, correction in righteousness and things of that nature. So the Mosaic law told people what to do, but did not assist them in the performing of it. They would say, don't thou shalt not commit adultery. But they didn't tell you how. How, how do I stop that? How do you stop people from running around? How do you stop people from cheating on each other? You see. Because you see, in those days, the Holy Spirit didn't dwell inside of a man, would rest upon him. Jesus had to come and die and resurrect so we could become what we call a living spirit. You see, so that's why I love grace and I love the scriptures of the New Testament because it tells me how not to commit adultery. It tells me not how to kill or how to steal. They say, don't steal, but they never tell people how to stop stealing. How do you make a thief stop stealing when his job is to steal? See, the devil can't stop stealing because he's a thief. And let me help you say about the devil. He ain't got a lot of power. He can't walk on the water. Do you know the devil can't walk on the water? So come on out on this water and walk with me. Come out on this water and walk with Jesus. Come on, glory to God. You see, because if, if you stay in the boat of religion, you only meet disciples. But if you get out on the water, you meet Jesus. Now, the devil can't walk on the water. Why? Because he's not a faith devil. He's a flesh devil. He can't tempt you in the spirit. See, to get out that boat, you got to walk in your spirit by faith. He ain't getting out that boat. And that's why people say, you stupid to get out the boat. But everything around the people in the boat's over their head, but everything around you, because you're close to Jesus, is under your feet. So remember, the devil can't walk the water. So just walk the sea. He'll leave you alone. Because he can't tempt you with anything but flesh. He's never tempted you in the spirit. You want a prime example? Have you ever been tempted to tithe? <laughs> Anybody ever been tempted to tithe? Has any pastor here, I had a counseling session where somebody said, man, I tell you what, you got to help me out here. I'm tempted to tithe. No. Why? Because tithing is a spiritual concept. Now the church world tries to make it flesh and so do people. Do I tithe on the net of the gross? Why don't you just sink your boat? Because anytime you give less, you receive less. Thank you for that Holy Ghost grunt. You see what I'm saying? So the Mosaic law told people what to do, but did not assist them in the performing of it. Write this down. There's a great expanse between the person who tries to do Christ's will because they want to and the person who does it because they're afraid not to. See, I do the will of God not because, I, I, not because I'm afraid not to. I do it because I want to. I enjoy being saved. Not long ago, I was at, I have a chapel in my home that I built specially for the Lord. I told him, I said, since you had a place in, in the desert in a tent, I built you a place you can come dwell if you want. So if I go in there and some blue smoke, uh, you know, oh, Jesus. I, and it's a beautiful chapel. I mean, I got pews in. I got, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I love that thing. You see, and I go in there because I want to. Not because I have to. People always ask me, uh, how long do you pray? Why do you need to know that? 
Because if it's not enough, you're going to criticize me. If it's too much, you're going to get you're going to feel bad that you're not praying enough. You don't pray according to Jesse. You pray according to Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So let me say this again. The great there's a great expanse between the person who tries to do Christ's will because they want to. And the person who does it because they're afraid not to. Since I got born again, I lost fear. I like what Brother Corbin said, fear tolerated this faith contaminated. I haven't had any of my faith ever contaminated. I know that sounds uh, cocky and arrogant. It's not contaminated. I, I, in fact, ladies and gentlemen, I, I love praying for me. Because when it's just me, I get my prayers answered just that quick. It's when I add you that that's the problem. <laughs> I don't mean that to be rude. I'm not there when I, Keith, when I pray, just me. When it's a decision between me and God, hey, man, I can get answer. If I pray this afternoon, I guarantee you, by the night, it's fulfilled. It's when I got to deal with other people because you got to take in consideration their will. Like I had one of my employers years ago said, you ought not be saying that, brother, just because you're raising up people's hopes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Did you get the revelation? That, what, what's Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, now faith is the substance of things. Hopeful. What's wrong with raising people's hope? Because see, they're automatically believing that it's not going to work. I don't have that in me. Amen. See, when I'm praying for myself, when I got to make the decision, I've taken into consideration my will. His will be done. My will be done. We just work together very well. <laughs> you see, so I never come in my mind, well, suppose it don't work. I, that doesn't come in my mind at all. And when God tells me to do the unbelievable and receive the impossible, if it's just me, okay, we can go. In other words, the devil tries to attack my body. Oh, I can get healed fast. It's when I'm praying for other people. They're going, oh, I'm trying, but just quit trying and get it. It's, that's why I don't counsel. That's why I'm not a pastor. I, lo I mean, I love pastors, but I, I'm not good at counseling. I mean, I'm not just, I mean, because I'm very honest, I have a three point criteria. Admit it, quit it and forget it. Now get out of here. I mean, I know that, that don't work in the church. I mean, that don't work in the church. It doesn't work in the church. Cause people want to, you know, like one lady said, I'm having problems. I say, why? That's a valid question. Me and my husband are having problems. Why? Who's not listening to each other? Well, we're trying to compromise. I said, take the COM off and just go to the promise and get rid of the comp. Amen. That's your problem. Misunderstanding, get rid of them three myths, those three letters, and you got to understand it. This is not hard, ladies and gentlemen, but you can complicate it when you deceive your own self. I know God said that, but you just genetically altered what you were believing. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, let, 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 I don't do these things because I'm afraid not to. I do these things because I want to. And when God tells me to do something unbelievable and impossible, I go, what? <laughs> Let's don't add nobody else, just me and you. Because it ain't going to take long. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now get back, get past the little humor on it. See, because when it's you and God, see, if two of you agree. I notice when me and Kathy agree on something, it gets done real quick. It's when she won't agree with me. <laughs> ah, and now we got a problem. <laughs> Delay. Trying to get me to see it that way. I ain't trying to see nothing. I just want something. <laughs> she told me one time, you never ask God for a need. And I said, I never will. That freaked her out. Why is that? I said, what's the matter? I don't believe his word. He said, he supply all my needs. Why well, am I going to deal with need? I don't tell God what I need. I tell him what I want. Now, some of y'all, some on television, just put your fur down. <laughs> Hang on. Don't judge me yet. Let me finish. Making me spit on myself here. <laughs> Hang on. Mirror, mirror on the wall here. Because when you get what you want, you destroy all your need. Notice when you got what you want, you don't even think about need. Need is no longer a part of your life. Why? Because want consumed it and destroyed it. The law is my shepherd, I shall not need. No, shall not want. The young lions do suffer lack, but he that seeks my face shall not want any good thing. The light that saith therefore knowing he will give you the desires of your heart. Why? Because that's want. Why does the church world say that it's greed? No, it's growth. Amen. People in heaven don't want nothing. They got it. Y'all not getting this. Hang on. Let me help you. 
This is Texas. How come all of y'all like buffets? Get all you want. What? Get you get what you want. Oh, do you feel greedy to go get seconds? No. Thirds? No. no. Do you think your, your grandbaby or your child, if you're in a grocery store, says, uh, Grandma, uh, Mimi, I want some, I want some, I want some, I want some candy, or Mama, I want some. Do you think the child's greedy? No, then why do you think it's greedy to tell God what you want? Mirror, mirror on the wall. I'm going to buy this tape myself. I don't care. <laughs> Lord Jesus, help me. Now, you see, that's why I don't ask God for needs. I don't have any. Look, look, look at me. I do not have any needs. I got a lot of wants. You know, it's harder to get a need than it is to get a want. Can you question God about his word about need? Write this down. You will never find pleasure in doing what you don't like to do. That's good, isn't it? You will never find pleasure in doing what you don't like to do. So why do you keep doing it? Let me say it again. <laughs> you will never find pleasure in doing what you don't like to do. Yet so many people keep doing it. Why? Quit. Don't do that. And my brother and I went to a doctor the other day. He said, Doc, every time I do this, it hurts my hand. He said, don't do that. <laughs> now that makes perfect sense. You will never find pleasure in doing something you don't like to do. You're trying to convince yourself. See, for years, I've had people try to get me to eat sushi. I was taught to cook a fish. I wasn't, you know, I can understand if you're stuck on an island and you don't know how to make a fire. Okay, you'll eat some raw fish. But I'm just, I don't like raw fish. I don't like the texture of it. Now, you might like it. Here's something else, curry. Ugh. I went eat at the most famous restaurant where Princess Di used to go eat Indian food. They said, you will love this. <sighs> I said, y'all got any peanut butter back there? Because this stuff, I can't handle it. Now, some people, I'm not, not being critical, just being truthful. See, I will never find pleasure in eating curry. I will never find pleasure in eating raw fish. So I don't. Now, Kathy, she says, every time you go to the place, you order the same thing. Why? <laughs> Why? Why don't you try? No, Jesse don't try nothing. He said, be ye therefore doers, not triers. <laughs> Come on, I'm buffeting today, baby. I don't try nothing. I do things. I don't try to give you money. You know what? I, she says, be a doer, Jesse. Be a doer. I said, okay, I will. Lord, I know. You see what I'm saying? You will never find pleasure. I can't get, over, get off of that yet. Trying to do something you don't like. It's truly amazing. Watch this. Trying to get healed. That's a kick. When trying never gets anybody healed. Doing does. And then you get this from a, a, a Christian magazine when God doesn't heal. Oh, you're calling God a liar? Just because you didn't receive it doesn't mean he didn't do it. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Listen, but see, I'm trying. And you know how you do it? Sometimes you mix it up. I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing. I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing. I'm believing, I'm believing. I'm, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing, but I, I, I'm, 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 I'm. You sound like Jackie Gleason on the honeymooners. Hmm. Write this down. Get a clear vision of the person you want to be. Not the person you like. Not someone else. Who you want to be. Who you want to be. This man here, Greg Peace, is a good friend of ours and co our church, came to me, had cancer of the throat. His own doctor said he ain't going to make this. 
Now, here's got, he got a wonderful family. Comes up to me, Greg, don't mind me saying, now, watch this. this now, I, I haven't been called to preach to the academic medical crowd, but he has. He comes up to me, I asked him a simple question, and it sounded hard, but see, he didn't have a cold. Uh, he didn't have the flu. He had cancer of the throat. I said, do you want to live? Do you want to die? Did I say that to you? I mean, I just walked in. He said, do you want to live? You want to die? <laughs> Greg said, I want to live. Good, then we ain't going to discuss dying ever. And God healed his body. <laughs> now wait, that, that was a great miracle. And he's here today. But he had the opportunity to preach to the doctors that treated him. They didn't ask me. They asked him. <laughs> See, he got a clear vision of what he wanted to be. He wanted to live and not die. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Oh, you're not going to forget this. You see, what do you want to be? I had a young man, a young black gentleman. Boy, he's built good. I said, what do you want to be? He said, I want to be a football player. Can you see yourself making touchdowns? Yes. I said, without injuries? See, you tend to forget about the injuries. If you want a full career, you, gotta, you can't have injuries. If you're going to go 12, 13, and that's tough, boy. And Mike Barber said, you know what I'm saying? I, I can't imagine Mike, the size man he is, running at me full speed mad. Uh-uh. 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 No, no. I'm going to be in the stands. Hit this wall. I'm, I'm, I'm staying up here. But you have to make up your mind to get a clear vision of what you want to be. I remember when I played baseball, I was a pretty good baseball player. I played football. I made every team I ever won them, but they used me to hold a dummy so people could hit them. Because I only weighed 119 to 125 pounds. That knocked me completely all over. But when it come to baseball, you didn't have to be big. I could hit. And I got trophies to prove it as a kid. I was a good baseball player. But I would admit, uh, my coach says, don't, when you, don't, when you judge a fly, you're talking about, you know, he said, see it in your glove. He said, when the ball's coming across that plate, whether it's a curve, knuckleball, fastball, see it hit the bat. In other words, don't take your eye off the ball. And when you swing it, see your chance, usually what you do is this. When the ball's about right here, you, you turn. And that's when it, it can do this. And you miss it and you strike out and you wonder, how did that happen? Because you took your eye off the ball. Focus on your priorities. You eliminate all confusion. Do you see what I'm saying here? So get a clear vision of the person you want to be. Now, to understand that, you got to have liberty. You got to be free. Free at last. You know, Dr. Martin Luther, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty. Free at last. But do you know the black man was free with the Emancipation Proclamation? What stopped him from voting? Lack of education. Because, see, when you, when you have years or hundreds of years of saying, you can't do that, you can't do this, a lot of people believe that stuff. I had that all my life growing up. You know, you can't do that, you can't do this. I said, that's why I'm getting away from y'all. <laughs> oh, it made my family mad as a hornet. Some of them still mad at me. I don't care. I don't mean that to be rude. Excuse me. Don't tell me what I can't do. Try to t at least tell me something I can do. I know what I can't do. I want to know what I can do. And I found that the Bible said I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. You know, and how many ministers do we have here? Hold your hand up. You're a minister. In over 35 years of full time ministry, I don't mean this prideful. I have never, ever had a financial deficit. That's unheard of. Not because I have more faith than you. I just didn't believe for one. They told me now when you go out there, you know, it's going to be tough. I said, no. Now, kid, shut up, kid. You can't have a plane. You can't even fill up a Toyota with gas. You know that man that told me that's been trying to fly in my plane for years? I ain't letting that fool get in that plane. <laughs> so we crashed for soul. When I needed you to believe with me, I didn't ask you for no money. I just needed you to believe with me. And you would not? Now you want to enjoy the fruit of that? Walk in love. I am walking in love. That's something most people don't know nothing about love anyway. Like one lady told me that day, I'm leaving the church. I'm leaving the church. I said, what's wrong, mama? 
The church ain't got no love. I said, you got some love? She said, yes. I said, where you going? You got what the church needs. I mean, you know, she said she had it. The church didn't have it, so evidently she should have just gave what she had. No, she didn't have no love. She had stupidity. The spirit of stupid had come upon her. I told her, you know what I told her? I said, if you don't think people like you here, wait till you get to the other church. They'll spit on you for sure. They ain't going to put up with that mess. <laughs> get a clear vision of the person you want to be. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Write this down. Liberty gives everyone a chance to do their best. Liberty, perfect law of liberty, but who's overlooking into the perfect law of liberty? Verse 25. Liberty gives everyone a chance to do their best. It's not equality of condition, but equality of opportunity. You see, it's not equality of condition, but it's equality of opportunity. Liberty gives everyone a chance to do their best. Whom the son is set free is free indeed. Now, if I'm free, then I should not have anything to hinder what I'm believing for. Since I'm free. Isn't that amazing? So liberty gives everyone a chance to do their best. Lord Jesus, mirror, mirror on the wall. So when I look at myself, I said, Jesse, you can do your best. I'm reading a book Kathy gave me of, uh, the other day about uh, Dr. Ben Carson of John Hopkins. Uh, you might have seen, seen the movie Gifted Hands. And, uh, and, and I saw that the other day. And, and I like, I, I enjoy the way he thinks. I told my pastor, I don't know if Nate's in here somewhere. Nate, uh, where are you, Nate? Are you in here somewhere? He'll be here tomorrow. Why, I, you see, a lot of times they don't understand why I walk around my ministry. I walk around my ministry quite a bit. Why? I'm listening for the sounds of thinking. Because if they're not thinking, they're making mistakes. I'm listening to the sounds. What the sounds of thinking sound like? The sounds of silence. You see, because if somebody's not thinking, they're heading for a mistake as quick as you've ever seen in your life. But if you can think, and God created you to think, any other species is done by instinct. But when a baby's born, it has no instinct other than its mother. They know something's not right. It has to learn. And once you learn something, instead of memorize something, that's when you learn to ride a bike, you don't have to ride one for 40 years, get on it and go down the road. But you memorize something so you can pass a test and two weeks later you can't remember what you studied. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm, mm. Liberty gives everyone a chance to do their best. It's not equality of condition, but equality of opportunity. See, Christians do not carry their belief. Their belief carries them. You know why some of, time, you know why some of your believing is not working? Your belief system is not right. It's not your believing. It's your belief system. What is your belief? Most people can't even tell you what their belief system is. They just tell you what they're believing. But what do you base your believing on your belief? What is your belief system? I've been here 20 something years. Me and Gloria have been knowing me all these years. Have you ever saw me sick? Not right. You know, I tried sick. I said, that ain't no fun. I ain't doing that no more. People said, no, no, no. See, the automatic, oh, no, it's just normal. I'm not normal. When, you know anybody look like me or act like I do? I'm totally different than any, most people's ever seen. And I thank God I am. Because I've never found anybody I want to be like. Now, I wish I could teach like Kenneth Copeland. I wish I could preach like R.W. Schambach. Won't somebody, you know, before we went to heaven. Lord Jesus, I like that. I wish I could say with A. Allen, say, let him run like the prophet Elijah. I even like to be Catherine Kuhlman. I believe in miracles. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it, buddy. But I can't, so I don't do that. Hmm. Christians do not carry their belief. Their belief carries them. See, it's not weight. It's wings. It's not weight. Jesus said his burden is easy. My yoga, my, 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 my yoga is easy. My burden is light. I've never struggled with those. That doesn't mean the devil didn't fight me. I've been shot at. I've been almost electrocuted while I was preaching. I've had him pull knives on me. Say, what you do? Jump. Just get out of the way. Glory to God. Hit the guy and pray for his healing. It's not weight. 
I'm not like this. Oh, I'm a Christian. I see so many downtrodden. See, that's deception. Mirror, mirror on the wall. See, it's not weight, it's wings. I understand my belief system. My belief system says by his stripes, I am healed. Oh, let me say it like the scripture. By his stripes, you were healed. Now, watch this. Your believing system is not equal to your belief system. Let me give you an example. By his stripes, you were healed. But I am sick. I'm not dealing with your I am sick. I'm dealing with your word healed. See, I'm dealing with your belief system. You're dealing with your believing system. That's why your belief is not working. Well, I ain't going to say I'm here when I am sick. I'm not dealing with your I am sick. I'm dealing with your word healed. If I can get you to look at your word healed like you're looking at your I am sick, I'll get rid of your I am sick with your word healed. <laughs> That's the belief system. Do you understand that? Most people don't get that because they think you're trying to make me lie. I, ain't, I would never tell anybody to lie or nothing. But you got to have your belief system with your believing system. Now, 36 to 100 fold. In red. Jesus said it. Some people say, I don't believe that. That's why you don't get it. <laughs> your belief system's not there. You judged your believing system by what you received, not what you believed. Believed. Paul said, I know. He wasn't trying to believe. Lee convinced himself. See, he was in perfect law of liberty. Jesus is the perfect law of liberty. So that's why he could give grace and fulfill the law, but yet not throw it away. Mm, mm, mm. The law of liberty in you makes you want to know yourself. Have you ever had a meeting with yourself? I've done that quite often. I look at my, I look at my failures. Well, I blew it. And then I study that. So I don't do that no more. Why did, I, why did I blow that? Usually it was disobedience, but if I just took the dis off, that's three letters messed up the whole obedience. And I said, I'm not doing that anymore. And the devil says, you have to. No, I don't have to do nothing. I said, I defeated you even when I was a sinner. He said, what do you mean by that? I said, how many times you told me something? Go out and get drunk, find you a woman. I said, no, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. <laughs> and I went home and went to bed. As a sinner, I shut the devil down as a sinner. He wanted me out there doing as a sinner. I told the devil I ain't doing that. Well, if I can defeat him as a sinner, I ought to be able to defeat him as a Christian. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Ah, oh, Lord Jesus. Get in touch with the power that makes you want to obey. Get in touch with the power that makes you want to obey. You see, then you'll understand the law of liberty in you makes you want to know yourself. Power. Let me tell you, great power is given to us, but we must be superior to it, ma'am, instead of driven by it. Because when you're driven by power, you hurt people. You don't care who you hurt. But when you're superior to it, you say, not my will, but thine be done. Amen. Yet you will tell people, nobody take my life from me. I'm going to lay down my life freely. Now, that is being superior to power. Jesus called, he said, man, he could call 12 leaders of angels one time. You know, do you know how many people would have died if Jesus would have done that? At his beck and command, 20 million, 400, 20 billion, 400 million men would have bit the dust. One angel in the Bible knocked down 185,000 men. One. And he wasn't an archangel. He just regular. Now you imagine an archangel. Whoo! Yet the world has not known that type of population. The planet. But because Jesus was superior to that power. Instead of driven by it. He went to the cross so you didn't have to go. Do you realize how many times Christians. I'm going to be dealing with another sermon on Christian propaganda. You don't want to miss any of my services. I mean, you'd be surprised how Christian propaganda destroys your mind. What made the Nazis grow so fast? Propaganda. You know how much propaganda is in the church? Oh, jeez, I wish I could do it, but I ain't taking Jerry's time. I'll do that sometime, whenever. Get in touch with the power that makes you want to obey. 
People say, why do you got, why, why you and Kathy have such a good marriage? I got in touch with the power that makes me obey. <laughs> I used to fight that, Keith. I don't fight that no more. Oh, when I was young, I'm going to tell you something, woman. <laughs> I say, whatever, mama, what you want? I say, hey, you know, you learn that as you get older. <laughs> Ain't no use keep fighting over this thing. What do you want to do? Because it's going to wind up being her way anyway. You know how it is. They know how to work that. And make you think you've made the decision on it. So the law of liberty in you makes you want to know yourself. Oh, I like that. Get in touch with the power that makes you want to obey. Write this down. Jesus is the infusion of law and liberty. Jesus has one leg in the Old Testament, the other leg in the New Testament. He's the center of both Testaments. You find him in the old, you find him in the new. And I even preach this to Jewish people. And I start off with this. Jesus is a Jew. He still is a Jew. Always will be, always will be a Jew. You understand? What's the matter? You don't like your own people? <laughs> See, people tend to forget, especially the Jewish people, that Jesus is Jewish. And the Gentiles tend to forget that he's still a Jew. He will always be a Jew. My daughter told me this the other day again. She says, Dad, how come every time you buy something, you're always thinking about investment? I said, I'm Jewish. I've been adopted into the family. Jewish people have a sense of finance. It's good. I said, Jody, thank God that everything I think of has to do with investment because you are my only heir. You get everything if you can get it out of your mama's hands. <laughs> just, just a joke. Just a joke. Just a joke. No, Kathy, very generous praise. But when it comes to Jody and my granddaughter, they got me, man. They got me whipped. They got me licked. I mean, I am beat two pieces. I'm controlled by three women, Kathy, Jody, and Meredith. And I try to say, I've never told Jody no. She'll be 42 years old in October. I have never yet told her no. Her mother has many times. And I used to blame it on, I said, Jody, I'd give it to you, but your mama don't want you to have it. I mean, I mean, and then when Meredith was born, Lord Jesus, she's five now, a little over five years old. She just controls me. She, she told me that they go to the store and get me some sugar. I went to the store and got her some sugar. She wanted some sugar cubes. I told her this yesterday. <laughs> yeah, what's today? Monday? No, not uh, Saturday. I said, Meredith, her, her name is Meredith Margot Walker. I call her Eminem. I say, Em, when you get as tall as your mama, your grandfather, she calls me grandfather. She calls the other side grandpa. People love her when she talks. She goes, grandfather. Grand, people go, <laughs> and they say, you'd make her call it grandfather? I said, I never was grand till she was born. <laughs> I never was. And her child, ah, going to make me great. Man, I got a beautiful future. So I, told, I said, man, I said, Em, when you get as tall as your mama, I'm a grandfather going to buy you a new car. She goes, a red one. I said, a red one, any kind. She said, did you do that for mommy? I said, I did. I told a preacher the other day, he said, don't you ever ever break that promise. They told me, and I won't name the preacher, they told me I would have a Shetland pony. I still ain't got my pony. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I'm going to keep that private, but that's the <laughs> true part of it. So I said, and I already put the money in the bank. I'm going to get that car. I can't wait till I see her. I'll be, whoo, Lord, I'll be up in the 80s, I guess, by then. But that'll be all right. So the other day she says, Mom, how come we don't have a swimming pool like Mimi does? <laughs> and Jody just bought this. She said, well, we're going to get She said, I want a slide. Listen, let's just get us a water park. <laughs> Jesus. I thought that sounded good to me, glory to God. I, I want to believe in the unbelievable and receive in the impossible. Oh, that's greed. No, that's growth. I'm telling her she can do anything. Just like God tells me, Jesse, you can do anything if you don't deceive yourself. 
Jesus is the infusion of law and liberty. Write this down. You keep his word because you want to keep it, like to keep it, and love to keep it. You keep his word because you want to keep it, like to keep it, and love to keep it. People tell me all the time, all y'all ever talk about is the gospel. Well, what's wrong with that? That's good news. How many times, I, just not long ago, I, I, I was at Brother and Sister Copeland's house and we were doing television, so I spent the night. At her. You know, as soon as I got there, we started talking about the gospel. We talked about the gospel going to the studio. We talked hours about the gospel in the studio. We w- walked down and said, we're going to go get something to eat at the house. We talked about the gospel. Before we went to bed, we talked about the gospel. Got up in the next morning, talking about the gospel. When I left, still talking about the gospel. Why? Good news. Great news. The gospel. See, it's not religion. Religion is boring. I mean, religion is a God in the weeds. It's a theological wilderness. Somebody's always asking you, what do you believe? Life. Life. And that more abundant. Abundant life. To the full. Till it overflows. Ain't nobody can ever be that happy because you ain't never been that saved. (laughs) See, you've deceived yourself. You, de- you deceive yourself by saying, you know how God is. Sometimes he does, sometimes he don't. That's deception. I got a book called Distortion, The Vanity of Genetically Altered Christianity. It's distorted. Distortion does things like that. That's wrong. When Jesus said you can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth you. You see, I'm just smart enough to believe that. People are always trying to get me to accept the world. Oh, I don't want to say that. Lord said, do it. Let me deal with liberty here. Let me say this last thing. Liberty is an allegiance to a higher power. I keep, I, I keep the word because I like it, keep it, and love it. But it gives me that allegiance to higher power. I never thought in my finite mind that I would ever see a Pentecostal denomination embrace drinking. But this particular Pentecostal denomination in another country says that you can get, you can drink, but you can't get drunk. Drink all you want. In fact, I've been around. They said, let's go out drinking. No, thank you. You can drink, but you can't get drunk. Pentecostal denomination. Never thought in my life I would ever see that. I never thought in my life that people would write books against faith. And yet they did in the 70s and the 80s. They call it Gnosticism. Seduction. Well, if faith is a seducing doctrine, I want to be seduced. But I never thought that I would ever in my lifetime see a Pentecostal denomination that believes in the gifts of the spirit, fullness of the Godhead body. Just endorse drinking. Just drink. Drink anything you want, but just don't get drunk. So I was on a television program. I'm going to shock you when I'm going to say this here. See, because whom the son is set free is free indeed. These three ministers come from this particular country and they say, Brother Jesse, it's just an American doctrine about drinking. You you can drink, but just don't get drunk. Yet the Bible explicitly says, don't look at the wine when it's red in the cup. All kinds of different things. No, it's if you you just drink as much as you want, but just stop before you get drunk. How do you do that? (laughs) Because, you know, when I was drinking, I started to drink, but I don't know when I got drunk. All of a sudden, drunk. (laughs) Huh? How many people have done that? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you weren't going to get drunk. You just, boom, drunk. Yeah. I mean, you know, it just happens, you know. Watch this. So I'm sitting on this television thing, and I love television. I enjoy it because I like the most bang for the buck. Touch as many people for the Lord Jesus Christ as possible. I'm sitting there, and they started about the wine issue. And I looked at my watch and went, oh, get out of here, man. Don't ask me about this mess. I'm just sitting there, I'm thinking, God, we got about 10 minutes, six minutes, come on. Hurry up. And they all talking, they say, you can drink. And all, man, the whole congregation, all, they're all shouting, you know, in the studio, oh, yeah, drinking, man. You know, because we're under grace. They know how to pad this thing. So I'm just sitting there going, <laughs> I ain't saying nothing. <sighs> and the host said, Brother Jesse. I went, no, no, no. But Jesse, what do you think about drinking? I said, I don't think about it at all. <laughs> it hasn't been in my mind in over f- f- almost 40 years. I said, but I will ask you men something. What else you want to do that the world does? Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, it went quiet. 
They said, no, bro, just, that's just an American doctrine that you're, un, you're under the law. You know, you're not under the law. You know, you're great. You know, I said, no, answer that question. What else you like? To, what else you want to do that the world does? When my scripture says, be a separate people. Be you holy for I am holy. They wasn't getting it. Why? Because everybody in the place wanted to drink. Now, Brother Jesse, you have to understand. So they're trying to, like, like I'm getting old or something, like I'm stupid. So I'm just smiling at them. And I thought, they just don't know how smart I am. I said, arrogance? No, no, that's the truth. I've studied the word of God. Now, I hadn't got there yet because I'm going to study till the Jesus comes or till I go home by the way of the grave. But I study the scripture. I'm looking for more light all the time. I like light. Because in the darkness, you stomp your foot and kill yourself. <laughs> when you got light on, man, my God, you know. And I saw this. Ain't, they're not taking this. They're not getting this. They won't get it. Because you see, they, they're looking for something that the world wants to do. They want to do what the world does. Now, I noticed all three of them had very pretty wives. And I thought, the Lord said, use that. I said, oh, Jesus. <laughs> He said, oh, you'll wake up their eyes if you use that. So I said, all right. I said, gentlemen, excuse me. I said, and so it was three. I said, excuse me. And one of the ministers, wives, was kind of like almost dead center. I said, that's your wife. She was a beautiful lady. Very, all of them were pretty, very pretty. But she was exceptionally pretty. Very beautiful. I said, this is your wife? Yes. I said, she's a beautiful woman. Thank you, Brother Jesse. And she said, we love you, Brother Jesse. We just love you. I said, thank you. I said, so you can drink, but not get drunk. He says, that's right. And I went, amen, amen, amen. I said, well, let me ask you a question after the show is over. I said, you see that curtain back there? He said, yeah. I said, what would you think if me and your wife just went in the back behind the curtain and just start making out? Come on, baby. He goes, I see him starting to get flushed. I said, no, no, come on. I just didn't let me touch you, baby. Come on. Hey, enjoy yourself. Come on, baby. Hey. Oh, I could see him getting mad. I said, whoa, whoa, don't get mad at me. Don't get mad. Now, his wife didn't look like she, she was offended. She, she didn't look like she was too offended. She's going, hey. <laughs> I thought, well, maybe I'm using the wrong analogy here. <laughs> you know. I said, I said, let me just touch you. Baby. Let me just, whoa. Well, I could see him getting mad. I said, whoa, don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at her. We didn't go all the way. I said, no, no, no. We didn't go all the way. We just played around. That's it. But we didn't go all the way. And not. The place went cold silent. I said, well, part of that you don't understand. I said, I promise you, if you're drinking, you're going to get drunk. You're going to slip up. I said, you start playing around sexually, you're going. You're going to go all the way. It's going to happen. I, and then you'll be, you're going to be in a, you're going to be in some counseling. I couldn't help myself. Lie, you fry. <laughs> yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. But you see, they didn't get it till it hit them with the sex thing. Oh, all of a sudden, whoa, 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 whoa. And all three of them went, I said, don't ever get mad. I mean, you know, if something like I said, that's going to never happen with me. But if that ever happened with someone else, don't get mad at her. Don't get mad. You know, because they didn't go all the way. They just played around. Just, you know. Do you know, all three of them said, we ain't drinking no more. <laughs> ah. Now, that's sad that you got to hit somebody in the face for something like that. But see, that's Satan's way of saying, let's play a little bit. See, Solomon did that trash. And then the next thing you know, he's building temples for false gods. Yet at the beginning of it, you couldn't have told Solomon. He'd have, he never thought in his finite mind that he would ever build a temple against a false god. But he started playing with women. He didn't play. He shouldn't. All of a sudden, he started marrying them. He started having sex with them. For you know it, now he's building temples. The false gods loses his anointing. Mirror, mirror on the wall. 